friends, I welcome you to this week's Sunday Reflection. This is the reflection of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. And the theme of our reflection this week is, With God the Seducer, there is no hiding place. When God breathes in His Spirit in you, you absolutely have no hiding place. And what God demands of you is to offer yourself as living sacrifice to Him. Let us look into the readings of today to see what they mean for us. In the first reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 7 to 9, we see the lamentation of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah. Jeremiah is such a personality that is shy, such a personality that wouldn't want insults. Instead, he prefers to seal his mouth, remain in peace, and then to avoid the rots, and then to avoid the persecution of the people. And so, let us make some analysis of Jeremiah's lamentation, because in the lamentation, we find interior crisis. Psychologists call it interior crisis. Let us make analysis on this to say this crisis very clearly. Jeremiah's time is the time of political and religious turmoil. Political turmoil in the sense that kings and chief priests, instead of having the interest of the people at heart, prefer to build palaces for themselves, ignore the poor, and then worst of it, to take no interest in administering justice. Now, religious turmoil again, in the sense that the people, instead of seeing the value of the spiritual effect of their sacrifices, rather put interest in the sacrifice and the ritual, forgetting the conversion, internal conversion, which will bring us close to God. So within this period, within these challenges, Jeremiah was called by God, chosen, and then sent to speak to the people. Jeremiah accepted the work of God, accepted this prophetic mission, and then spoke in the mind of God to the people. Instead of the people responding well, the people persecuted Jeremiah, insulted Jeremiah, even those Jeremiah was thinking are his own people, are close to him, equally despised him. And so this, cause, this was the cause of his crisis, that Jeremiah could even blame God for his situation. But then, a, sen a sentence was so outstanding, was so touching. And what was it? He said, the seducer God has seduced me, and I have been seduced. When God breathes His Spirit in you, you do not have a hiding place. Rather, He is demanding we use our bodies, we use ourselves as instruments to Him. Now, in the second reading, from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, here we see St. Paul urging his Christians in Rome not to conform themselves to the world. Rather, to offer themselves as living sacrifices to God. Now, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, and then they are instruments with which the Holy Spirit works or acts on. And so St. Paul is urging us to use these bodies and what these bodies can do, can act on, to use them as an act of worship to God. But when we go to the church, we go to worship. Why not use our daily task as acts of worship to God. Why not see God in all we do? Why not see God in our relationship with our neighbor? Why not see God in the shop we go to, in the offices we go to, in the school we go to, and in all we do? For when we offer ourselves as living sacrifice to God, we become Christ-like. Now in the gospel, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 21 to 27. 
here we see the encounter of Christ and Peter. Christ predicts his passion, death and resurrection and demanded of his followers to renounce themselves completely and even their life to him. Now let us make some analysis of this rebooking. Christ rebooking Peter gets behind me. Let us make some analysis of this rebooking. First of all, the disciples knew that Christ is the Messiah. But Christ knew they don't have sufficient knowledge of who he is. The idea of the Messiah they have is the warrior Messiah who will come to liberate them from their enemies. And that was reflected in the response of Peter to Christ. And so Christ immediately rebuked him to get behind him. Now, Origen, one of the patrist, our patristic scholars and a great theologian, analyzed this rebuking. He said that some translations interpret this, this rebuking as Christ saying, Get behind me, Peter. And some translations also interpret it as be gone, Satan. And now he says, Christ is sending the devil, the Satan in Peter that made him to make such sin, that make, make him to put a stop to what God has destined. He's sending the Satan away and rebuking Peter to get behind him to take his steps. For Christ is supposed to detect the peace. And so Peter is supposed to get behind Christ as a follower to take the steps. And so, this rebuking again, Christ calling Peter, I rebuking Peter reminds Christ of the experiences in the desert, the 40 days and night experience in the desert, where the devil came to tempt Christ not to take up his cross. Again, the experiences in the Gethsemane also reminds Christ of this response of Peter, where the devil was also trying to make effort that Christ does not take up his cross. And so Christ rebuked Peter immediately, though his disciple, though someone who few few days ago, few hours ago, he gave him the key and made him the rock. But right here, taking the wrong step, he rebuked him. And so, dear friends, what, there are a lot of lessons we need to learn in the readings of today. And these lessons, we need to go home with them. The first lesson is in the first reading of today, we are called or we are reminded of our prophetic mission. For by the virtue of our baptism, we are called, we, are, we share in the prophetic kingly, kingly and the priestly function of Christ. What is this prophetic mission? The mission to offer ourselves to God as living sacrifices, as instruments. That Jeremiah did, and God breathed his spirit in him. He was fearless, and he declared the will and the mind of God. We need to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, always, for God is ready to use us to bring to completion his work on earth. In the second reading again, we see St. Paul urging his Christian Christians in Rome and urging us today that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And these bodies, we need to use them as instruments. We need to use them for the work of Christ. We need to use our gifts. We need to see, take our daily task and use them for the things of God. We need to see God in all we do. What this body can do our relationship with our neighbor and our daily task going to the offices for work going to, to shops for selling all these as instruments to God secondly in the gospel of today we have a lot of lessons in the analysis of origin first of all God is calling us to be good followers and once we become good followers we need to obey the will of God. We need to obey and take the steps of God. Again, we are also called to obey. As we obey the will of God, we are called, we are given second chance as Peter. Once we go for confession, 
Christ gives us second chance. He gave Peter a second chance by rebuking him to get behind him to take his steps. So today, when we confess our sins, we ask God for forgiveness, God accepts us and gives us the second chance to remain his people. Another lesson again from this rebuking is the fact that even our loved ones, once they take the wrong steps, we need to rebook them, say the truth. Our leaders, though they do favor to us, but once they do not do the right thing, we need to say the truth. Our prophetic mission, like Jeremiah, is to say the truth. Our leaders, no matter how they give us favor, no matter how they do anything for us, we need to rebook them. Even our loved ones, even our parents, even our friends, we do not, we shouldn't allow fond love to take us away from God. We need to rebook everything that does not, that, that is not right. And we need to stand and champion the right. Dear friends, we need to remember, God wants us to use our bodies as instruments for his work. When the Holy Spirit, when God breathes His Spirit in us, we do not have a hiding place. And there and then, what He demands of us is to offer ourselves as living sacrifice. May the good Lord bless His word.